Hey yo, it's Crackalack and Challengers. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to clean an aquarium. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to clean this 60 gallon aquarium. And I'm going to explain how you should scrub the glass, how you should do water changes and some other general maintenance. Now, one thing about this aquarium is that it is absolutely nasty. So I actually let this aquarium get pretty nasty. I didn't do maintenance for a whole two weeks and I did not adjust the light cycle. So as you can see, there's just a massive amount of algae on this aquarium and we're gonna scrub it all off with one of these magic erasers. And honestly, it is going to be so satisfying. Make sure you guys stay to the end of the video and let's get into it. So I guess step one is scrubbing the side of the aquarium as well as general spot cleaning and maintenance and cleaning up some of the larger debris in the aquarium. So what I like to do is scrub the side of the aquarium, pick up any small dead plants or anything that I see and make sure everything is loose because after we do this step, we'll come in with a siphon and suck out all the old water and all the old waste and we'll perform a water change. And I'll talk about that more in a second. But after we do the water change, we wanna to top off the aquarium by adding more water into the aquarium. And after doing that, that's about it. Every once in a while, you will want to do some maintenance on your aquarium filters and clean out the nasty stuff inside of it. I did that in a previous video and I will have a link for that if you want to check it out at the end of the video. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is putting my hand in this nasty aquarium to scrub out the sides. And I always talk about this, but one of my favorite things about this aquarium is the fact that it's like a panorama aquarium. You can look at it from this angle, from this angle, and also this angle. And it is super dirty, so let's start scrubbing. All right, so here's the aquarium and I've also noticed Notice a small little pest snail species growing in this aquarium and I haven't taken care of that mainly because we are turning this aquarium into a terrarium in an upcoming video. So that's why I basically left them and once they die their decomposing matter will be great for the fertilizer for future plants in this terrarium. So when you're doing maintenance in an aquarium it is always important to have a towel like this so you're able to wipe your hands as you take your hand out. But let's get started. Oh my gosh. Oh it's kind of it's hard. It's a hard algae. Oh my gosh, do you guys see that streak? Here, I'll do another one a little closer. That is so crazy. I can like spell my name out or something. Oh, oh my gosh. That is so crazy. That is such a thick line. And the reason that we are doing uh, the scrubbing and maintenance before we do the water change is just so like this algae, when you see I squeeze it, a lot of that nasty stuff is coming out and we don't want that to be all in the aquarium after the water change so we're gonna suck all this up once we're done scrubbing but let's get oh my gosh i'm gonna spell like high or something oh 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 my gosh do you see that it says hi oh my gosh all right we gotta just keep scrubbing and getting all this nasty stuff off you do want to make sure that you at least do this like a minimum would be once a month I left this tank for about two weeks without doing any maintenance on it. And that's why these stains are this bad. But if you leave it for such a long time, they can become hard stains and it can almost be impossible to take off. But using these LG scrubbers, check them out down below wildpetsupply.com. I'm gonna be quiet and just do like a quick time lapse of this so it's a little more satisfying and you don't have to hear my annoying voice. Okay. All right, so now that we are done scrubbing the aquarium, I also decided to fix some plants that have gotten unrooted and floated to the surface. And I replanted those in the aquarium. And now that all of that is done, it is time to start cleaning out this aquarium and doing a water change. So there are many different ways that you can do water changes. I'm using an automatic water change siphon. It is connected directly to my sink. And when I turn the water on, it creates a suction and pulls the water out of the aquarium. This is a very fast method, but when I first got started, I just used a bucket and a siphon tool and I just suck the water out and had to do it bucket by bucket. If you have a lot of aquariums or if you have a large aquarium, I really recommend getting one of these automatic changers. It's really great at time saving and really comes in handy. And what's great about it is not only does it suck the water out, but it can also send water directly back into the aquarium. So I don't need to do trips back and forth. And I do not have chlorinated water, which is great. So I can just add the water directly into the aquariums without adding a dechlorinator like most people have to do. So let's get started. You can probably hear the water going on. So a lot of people ask me what I do for water changes. Some people only remove about 10% of the water about here. 
others do 25 and others do 50%. And I even know some people that just do 100% water change where they remove almost all the water and just send it back in so it's all brand new water. In my case, since my aquariums have been established for so long and the filtration that I have has been set up and has so much beneficial bacteria and the plants that I have also help clean the aquarium, I really only do about a 10% water change. And you also notice in some of my aquariums, I sometimes don't even do water changes and I just do water top offs once a month. And every once in a while, I will do a water change, but I do not recommend that if you're brand new to keeping aquariums and if your aquarium is freshly cycled because you, because that could overload the system. But in my case, with my aquariums, that's what I end up doing. So for this aquarium, I'm not gonna do the biggest water change since I will be emptying this entire aquarium soon and we are going to turn it into a terrarium. But for now, I'll let it run for a little longer and then start filling the aquarium back up. Okay, so now that I'm done doing the water change, I'm going to be spraying the side of this aquarium with the vinegar-based window cleaner. I do not recommend people using Windex just because that is harmful and can possibly harm your fish. Vinegar, however, tends to have a very little impact and this is what most aquarium like professional cleaners use. So what I like to do is I like to spray downwards, not into the aquarium, so I spray down. And this way, none of the spray will get into the aquarium. Then I work my way down on the aquarium, and this gets rid of water stains or anything that happens, and it makes your aquarium look a lot better. This is a great finishing touch. And because this is a 360 aquarium, I have to do it to both sides, which takes a little bit more time, but it's worth it in the end. All right, and that's the basics to keeping your aquarium clean and doing maintenance. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And also, if you'd like to learn more about different things, check out Skillshare. With my link down below, you'll get two months for free. And you can also check out my own classes. I made some about YouTube and also photography. So check those out down below. And also, if you want some aquarium supplies, check out wildpetsupply.com. Use the code CHALLENGER10 for 10% off your order. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button. I hope you enjoy this. And if you have any more questions about water changes, I've received a lot on YouTube, so I guess this all video should answer most of those. One question I also get asked is, why do I keep my water level lower? So in this aquarium, I do have mystery snails, and the way mystery snails breed is by laying an egg sac at the top of the aquarium. They don't lay it like most snails in the water. So I like to have a little bit more space for them, and that's why I have that in this aquarium. And I do that with some of my aquariums that I just keep mystery snails in, and that's just in case. But I do raise it in some of my other aquariums. Like in my 90 gallon, you guys can see, it is raised, like right above the line. In this aquarium, I have some mystery snails, so that's why I have it. There's one right there, all the way in the back. And this is what the aquarium looks like. It still is a little cloudy, but that'll clear up over the next couple hours because of the new water, some bubbles and other stuff might have gotten in there. Once it filters out, it should, oh, I missed the spot with the sponge. I'll take care of that later. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button. See you in the next one. Peace. Feel it!